The 20 Premier League clubs are calling for an emergency meeting this week to outline their opposition one. Yeah, to this independent regulator which was recommended by Tracy Crouch in our fan-led yeah. review just uh, last week. Um, where I keep on asking you, where is this going to, to go? Because I think the regulator is being brought in for the right reasons, but you remain doubtful of that and and keep on telling me the Premier League can sort out its own problems here leave it to the Premier League no, it will sort no, it out no I'm not saying that at all I'm not saying the Premier League can sort out its own problems because the Premier League doesn't have any problems the Premier League has a problem with the issue that the regulator will be coming through the doors because it will do something the football clearly needs to do which is redistribute so right. I've not said the Premier League will sort out its own problems I didn't say that to Christian Perslow I actually said to Christian Perslow hold on a second here while you start telling us what you've pushed down the pyramid you haven't met your obligations and you only did things and by the way when you say you gave 250 million to the EFL no you didn't you guaranteed a loan and you didn't even guarantee the loan you arranged you arranged the funding of it so you've really done very little so my actual point was is that the method of delivery the idea that a regulator coming into football is a good idea to me lacks some substance around the real thinking of what regulation might bring. Now, the 20 football club, I, I listened in, in, with interest and engaged yesterday with the BBC journalist, Dan Rowan, that was having the interview with Richard Masters. Right. And I was gobsmacked at Richard Masters' first response, which was that we, <laughs> we embrace the idea of regulation. That, to me, is a bluff because they don't embrace the idea of regulation because the only beneficiaries of regulation are going to be everybody else outside of the Premier League and not necessarily the Premier League. But would, so, the, would the chief exec the Premier League need to bluff in this instance? Well, yes, yes, he would, because in the instance of what this could be used for, what, for it, could, honesty, what it could be utilised for, well, then don't go into football. What, 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 <laughs> what it could be used for is leverage. The EFL have had never had any leverage in the last 30 years, either from the commercial viability of the people that are running it, i.e. their competence, and the economic reality of what they would have to leverage the Premier League into giving them more money. They've never had a tool. They've now got a tool because they know that independent regulation will strike at the heart of distribution of money. It'll also do a lot of other things that it doesn't need to be doing, right? But it'll strike at the heart of the current distribution model, which suggests, and there's a reason why the current distribution model works the way it does, because the Premier League has basically attracted all the money. But if you've got 91% of all broadcasting money that comes into football in this country going to 20 clubs and 9% going to 72 and the non-league as well and your Premier League has been created out of the pyramid and the EFL supports the Premier League and the, and the EFL develops young players that are bought by the Premier League then you have an absolute fundamental problem at the heart the distribution model is completely wrong uh, But Simon, if, if I can jump in that would be fine if, the, if there was a unified stance here in the Premier League there's not I mean Matt Lawton in the Times is morning is saying sources claim there's a split amongst English football's elite over the issue of an independent regulator. Guaranteed. I, I will be a monkey's uncle if they get a quorum of 14 clubs suggesting that they want to have an independent regulator. Yeah, you might have a couple of clubs that bounce in and out of the Premier League and go down to the Championship on a regular basis, or clubs that are worried about their future. But in order to get the, the clubs, the 20 clubs in, in chorus together, you need 14. I guarantee you there will not be 14 clubs in that Premier League that turn around and say they want an independent regulator. You saw the reaction from Christian Perslow. You'll see the reaction. You've seen the reaction from Steve Parrish, right, in the newspapers, yeah, who, yeah. who wrote a solid article, some of it self-serving, some of it disingenuous, and some of it a little bit duplicitous, but most of it on the money. Most of it on the money. If you look at the, the, the fan-led review, if you look at the dynamics behind it, some of it makes sense, and a lot of it does not. But the main issue is that the Premier League can sit there and say, we can sort this out. Well, you haven't sorted it out and you've got no reason to sort it out because sorting it out means you're going to lose some of your money and you don't want to lose that. Now, what the EFL have got now is with the momentum being behind the potential idea that government legislation is going to pass through a regulator, that will bring the Premier League to the table and Trevor Birch and Rick Parry can sit there and go, if you don't start playing ball with us properly now and engage properly like we've asked you to over years and years and years we're going to be in support of an independent regulator and we're going to be in support of removing the 3pm blackout
And all of those things are going to bring the Premier League to the table. And Richard Masters sitting there spinning up a bunch of woos and rubbish yesterday about how the Newcastle takeover didn't happen for a particular reason and why it didn't this particular reason and why that the EF, uh, the um, EPL are happy with the independent regulators is just the positioning. Well, we've, only, positioning. we've only had pushback from two, if you like, high-profile individuals in the game. Well, See, Steve Parrish at Palace, and this was Perslow sitting in that chair yeah. opposite you last but week. But neither one of those are big six clubs. Neither one. We normally hear the argument that it's the big six, it's the big clubs that will be against this. It's all about what the big clubs because they don't want to do it. Granted, neither one of these clubs. That. Neither one of these clubs. May, one of them may want to be, and one of them may try to be. Well, right. this was personal last week. What I want to ask you after this is, and I asked him at the time, and he came back at me. But why has he continued to take this stance? This was Christian Perslow. Blocking, it's a big word. I'm not here to block the government, OK? I, I had a great conversation with Tracy Couch, Crouch in summer. I was I was honoured to be asked my views. I gave my views. And if I was trying to summarise them for the purpose of this debate, I don't think the problem lies in the Premier League. The solution lies with the Premier League. It's the All everything right. good in English football sits in the Premier League. Right, OK. And, and so... Can we work with Tracy to try and fix some of the problems further down the pyramid? Of course we can. Do we need to appoint somebody, take a year to find them, give them a name regulator? Probably not. We've got an FA, we've got Rick Parry at the FL, we've got Richard Masters. These are highly experienced people. They can probably figure it out. Now, Simon, that's fine. Everybody's yeah, but, united but on it. that's a crock. But you don't get a solution but if there's division. But, that, but that's a crock. Right? It's an arrogant crock because the only thing that lies in the Premier League is all the money. The problem and the solution are in the same guise. It's a wolf in a wolf's clothing. They created a problem for football by the very dynamics of the Premier League, having all the money and the distribution of player wages and transfers has filtered down so the guys in the Championship to the guys in the bottom of League Two are all adversely affected by the inflation of the Premier League. And you can't not be because of the association. Now, the bottom line is, is that they don't want to distribute. And I understand why they don't want to distribute, because they're sitting there going, who wants to watch... Macclesfield versus Lincoln around the world. They want to watch Manchester United versus Liverpool and yeah. we bring in all the revenue. But unfortunately, when you when you live in a collective association where football is a pyramid and your very existence was created out of this pyramid, you have to be able to accept that the distribution model isn't right. And when you sit there and say, oh, we'll do a parachute payments, that's a load of old cobblers. That's already budgeted for. There needs to be a carve-up. There's currently a request from the Premier EPL, which they're never going to get, for 25% of the distribution. They're never going to get. There's going to be a horse trade around distributions. But that's not the only thing that independent regulation wants to deal with. It wants to deal with granting the golden share to fans, which is a non-starter. Because anybody buying a football club isn't going to want to give away a golden share. Yes, on heritage items like club logos hmm. and club colours, that's fine. But not on the idea of how you commercially run your football club and who you sign and who you don't sign. Introducing standard promotion and relegation clauses. Don't be bloody silly. That's employment law. That's, that's not for a regulator to get involved in. And you look at the idea of how raid agents are going to be regulated. That's not an independent regulator's job. That's a licensing situation. Oh, but Simon, you've been FIFA. calling out for the regulation of agents. But not by an independent regulator in this you've country. Been calling out for not, them to be not, brought into not, line. Of course I have. And I've called for the game to be able to make sure that it governs it. And what this conversation, what this does is it brings a conversation. This is the beginning of a conversation, not an end of it. The conversation now has had momentum created behind it because the fans have been given what they believe is a voice. Yeah. Anything that has government involvement, and don't buy into this nonsense that people like Gary Neville are peddling, that this will not be the government. Because it's a government-appointed administrator, and the head of the regulator will be appointed by the government, the same government that people think are incompetent and couldn't run a bath. So if you if you were in this meeting this week... No, no. And a fellow, say, and a fellow chairman is sitting with you saying, Simon, do you know what? I'm going, to vote for, I'm going to vote for the independent regulator. Which meeting? You would say... Don't do it. Which meeting do you want me to be in? Do you want me to be in the EFL meeting when it's 72 clubs and I'm saying to Rick Parry, put our foot on these guys' throat now, right? We've got an opportunity to get a better distribution. We've got an opportunity to get better economics into the into the EFL and bring it closer. Without so put, the regular Now, term. if I'm in the Premier League and I'm sat here in the Premier League and I'm sat here as one of the established clubs in the Premier League, I'm sitting there going, last thing we want is regulator. We might have to get into a horse trade to be able to find a mechanism that, that, that give, enables us to give more money to the EFL Control some of that money going down there and what they do with it, but by the same token, doesn't hurt us in the same way that possibly give. Because at this moment in time, you give 9%, Jim, 300 million will go to the EFL. If you go to 25%, all of a sudden that's going to be 800 million. Right? That means 500 million quid is going to come from somewhere else. And at 500 million quid is 25 million pounds per Premier League club 
per season. You think they want to do that? They know where they're going to want to do that. And the regulator is potentially going to have... But also, the regulator's got to unpick every single aspect of football. The broadcast deals... So the, the regulator walks in and says to Sky, we want to take a load of money out of the Premier League and we want to give it to the League One, League Two clubs. And Sky are going to go... Well, how does that work for our content then? Because that means the club in the Premier League can't spend any money in the same way they once did before. And that might be a good thing. It might be, it might drive down the player wages. But independent regulation, trust me, is not the way through this. Politicians shouldn't be near business. Po- should be near. Shouldn't be near. But they sports, are. But they are. And some of them shouldn't even be near bloody politics. But they are. They are. That's a simple fact. This would. No, they're not. I, I would be with they're you not. on this. They're not. If there was total unification in the Premier League, but there's not. Jim, the clubs are split. Jim, you will have. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, as sure as day follows night, you will not get a quorum of clubs. Yeah, of course you'll have a couple of clubs. You always have a couple of people in a room that don't necessarily agree with a particular agenda, but that won't be the quorum and that won't be the majority, so it won't be an initiative that Premier League are going to support. Neither do the... According to Steve Parrish, the EFL don't want it, the PFA don't want it, who cares what they want anyway. The FA are redundant because they've given up their position in the authority chain a long time ago. So really and truly, it's about whether the EFL can put their foot on the throat of the English Premier League and say, here we go, guys, it's time for a dance. Right? We've not had to have this dance before. Mm. We're now on your dance card. Okay. You're going to have to do something better with us than dress it up as £250 million loan guarantees and give us virtually nothing. I know what you're saying, but that means the EFL and Rick Parry have got to take some bravery pills, and I'm not sure they're in the And they've to got take the opportunity them. to... I believe they will. Okay. Okay. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker, TalkSport.